Hey guys, in this video I will teach you how to publish a NuGet package with an automated build pipeline in Azure DevOps. Let's get started. To make it possible for the automated build pipeline to publish packages to NuGet.org, we first need to authorize it. In order to do this, we need to create an API key at NuGet.org. As you can see, I'm already signed in, so I will click my username and then go to API keys. There I will create a key that I will name Azure DevOps key. Uh, these settings are fine. For the scope, we want to be able to push new packages and update package versions. And for the pattern, we will use an asterisk because we want to be able to push new packages and update package versions for everything so that's all we need to configure so let's create the key and we have it here now and i will copy the key so we can use it later when we create the automated build pipeline as you can see i am now signed in at azure devops I created a project named NuGet Packages. And I will now do the final preparation before we start with the creation of our automated build pipeline. This is creating a service connection to authorize for NuGet.org. We can do this by clicking project settings and then going to service connections. And if we click service connection, we get a list of service connections we can make. We will look for NuGet, click next. And then we want to authenticate using the API key that we created. I still have that copied, so I will paste that here. The feed URL will be the one of NuGet.org. It is suggested here, so I will copy it. And for the service connection name, I will use code along with Ron NuGet. And then we save it and that's all we need to do for the NuGet service connection. If we go to the pipelines tab, we can create a new pipeline. Our code is hosted at GitHub. And we will do this for the repository mock HTTP client. And the template that I want to use for the YAML file that configures our pipeline is ASP.NET Core. And the reason that I use that is it is because it contains some defaults that we can reuse. I will remove the comments. And for the trigger, what we want to configure is that if a commit is pushed to our main branch, that that is the trigger for the automated build pipeline to run. Uh, for the build agent, a VM image is installed with the latest version of Ubuntu, which is fine. And a variable is configured for the build configuration with the value release. That's also something we want to use. So here we have the first step where the solution is built. That's what we want to have so we can keep that. Now the next thing we want to do is to create a package. And we will do that using the .NET Core task pack. And this is the desired folder. We want to look for projects, but there's one exception. We do not want test projects to be turned into NuGet packages. So we can copy this. So test projects are excluded. We don't have any at this point, but if we ever add one in the future, we do not want, want it to bite us in the behind. Uh, this is all fine. Let's look at the pack options. We do not want automatic package versioning. So this is fine. There's one thing I would like to add, and that is to give it a display name. And I will write uh, create package. What we want to do next is to 
publish the package to nuget.org. Uh, publishing packages is also possible with the .NET Core task, but if you want to publish to nuget.org using an API key, it does not work. So we will use the nuget task. Let's see, is there a search bar? nuget, yes, and we want to push uh, the path to look for nuget packages is incorrect because it's not in a subfolder, but it is directly in the artifact staging directory. So we also need to change that here. We want to push it to an external NuGet server. Now there should be something in the drop down. Yes, there is. And let's look at the advanced options. Now that's not of interest. So if I'm not mistaken, this is all we need to do for the configuration of the build pipeline. So let's save and run this. And I'm fine with this being added to the main branch. So let's execute this. And we can see that the package is successfully pushed to nuget.org. There's one thing that I would like to improve though, and that's I see here that this is uh, labeled as NuGet command. So I forgot to add a custom display name. So I will edit the pipeline to do that. Uh, let's go back here and add a display name. I will name this uh, push to NuGet.org. And I will save this because it makes the reading the logs of the of a run a bit more obvious. So let's save this. And there we have the automated build pipeline that's able to push packages to nuget.org. Now let's say we want to add new functionality to the package based on feedback from the users. They would like two more create overloads for the mock HTTP client factory so they can easily provide a response string or a response object. The format that I use for versioning is semantic versioning. This works with a major, a minor and a patch. We up the patch if no new functionality was added and the code is backwards compatible with previous version. We up the minor when we add new functionality, but the code is backwards compatible with previous versions. If the code is not backwards compatible with previous versions, we will add the major. In this case, we add new functionality, but everything that already existed will be backwards compatible. So we will up the minor and therefore create a new version 0.2.0. .0. Let's start by creating a branch for this. Uh, first, we want to get the latest version of main because the YAML pipeline was added to the main branch. We will then create a new branch named 0.2.0. .0. And we will then start with the implementation of the new features. And let's add the overloads that I just mentioned. So for the first one, we will again return an HTTP client and the method name is also the same, but this one takes two input parameters. It will also take an HTTP status code, but alongside it will take a string that we will name response string. And this can again call this create method. So we will have to create a response message here. So let's return create and then 
make a new HTTP response message. We will provide an HTTP status code in the constructor. And here we will set the content, which will be a new string content that takes our response string as input. So that's all we need to do for the first overload, except for the documentation, but I will add that off camera again because it's not that interesting. Now for the second overload, we will create and we will work with a generic. Again, the first input parameter is an HTTP status code. And the second one will be of type T and we will name this response object. We will start with deserializing the response object to our response string. So let's say is I will use JSON convert. I'll probably need to install the NuGet package. Yes. And then I will serialize the response object. This will give us the response string that we want to use and we can then call the method that we just created. So we return create and provide the HTTP status code and the response string. And with that, we have created the two overloads that were requested by our users. So now let's update the project properties. And I'm afraid that this might take quite some time because I've seen this before. So let's see if we can update what we want right here. I will make this 2.0. The description remains the same. The only thing else that changes is the package release notes. And I will write added two overloads for the create method of mock HTTP client. Uh, one that takes an HTTP status code and response string as input and one that takes an HTTP status code and response object as input. What I will do now is uh, write the code documentation and update the readme file and after that we will continue with uh, pushing the changes to Git and then merging to the main branch. We will start by adding the changes. And then we write a commit message. Add it to overloads for the create method of mock HTTP client factory and then we push it again we need to push it to the remote using this command and we will now go to the main branch and merge the branch is uh, git merge 0 0.2.0. And if we now push this, our automated build pipeline should be triggered and it should automatically push version 0 0.2.0 to nuget.org. So let's push it and check if that actually happens.
we can see that the pipeline is running. So it was automatically triggered. And we can see that it passed. And that is all that needs to be done to automate the process of pushing packages to NuGet. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and to subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or feedback on the video, you can add a comment in the section below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.